Hi everybody, David Dilling from Marksboro here. Well, here I am in my makeshift office. I've gone broken my leg. Yes. Uh, not the pain, my loss. Okay. Ah. That's fine. Ah. <laughs> I'm not here to pick on Adobe. I mean, I use InDesign, Illustrator, Photoshop daily. But the reality is, once again, and it's ironic that this YouTube channel started back in 2008 with the very first video being about live pre-flighting and InDesign and how flight check is professional's choice and showing you exactly why. Hello. Hello. My name is David. My name is David. Well, here yet again I'm going to show you now we're on InDesign CS6 flight check version 6.90 how that is still the fact today. A professional pre-flighter or pre-press operator, layout artist at a publisher, or graphic designer who takes quality serious will want to watch this video. I think it's very useful information. Many customers have had that have done this have had serious problems in InDesign. We can fix those as well. But there's no reason to, to fix after the fact. Marksworth's flight check and pre-flighting in general is all about allowing you to stop problems before they become real big job stoppers. And that's what Marksware is all about, always has been. And All right, let's go check it out, what I have to show you today. Very interesting stuff. Today I'm going to show you why to use Marksware's flight check over InDesign Live pre-flight in CS6 or CS5. Of course, it's nice that down here you see a little indicator of what could be problems in your InDesign file. But what I want to show you today is an area where flight check excels. I'm going to do a couple things. I'm going to go into PowerPoint here. I have a PowerPoint document, also on a PDF DTP. And I'm going to grab an image. I'm going to, I'm going to copy and paste this image. Okay, copied it. I'm going to go in here, Command V, or you can, of course, do Edit Paste. And there it is. Okay, so we're going to put that here. It doesn't really matter anyway. It doesn't have to be a perfect document to show you what I'm going to do. So that was copied and pasted from a Microsoft product. It can be Word or PowerPoint. You'll see what I mean in a moment. Next, what I want to do is go into the Internet. I'm closing PowerPoint. I want to go into the Internet here. And what I want to do... Did a, web search, did a web search for flight check, which we're going to show you in a moment here. And I'm going to Google under images to find images about flight check. Now, number one, there could be copyright issues with using these images in a publication or artwork. But in this case, unfortunately, many people do this. Now, this is wrong, what I'm doing. Don't get me wrong, because we get bad InDesign files, which we fix just about daily from people that have done just this. And their InDesign file will eventually crash and not only crash, but die, no longer able to be opened. Our service can help resurrect them, but it is a iffy process and does not always work. Works about 70% of the time. So this is what you do not want to do, but what I hear time and time again people are doing. They'll take an image and say, hey, that looks cool. I want that here. And this one looks nice, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to view original image. I say, okay, that looks good. Let's, let's grab that one and use it here. Uh, you see what I'm saying? So they're grabbing them from the internet, dragging and dropping from the Safari browser right into the page. Now the danger, as you see, is that these, these files look great. I mean, these images look fantastic. And, and you can say, wow, that's be a great to print this. I mean, obviously I could work on this layout, but you get the idea of what I'm trying to show you here. People are copying and pasting a lot from Word, text, and images, which can both cause problems and corrupt files. Beyond that fact, what we're going to talk about today is the pre-flight process. So these files now are used in my so-called print layout, my print document here. All right, so here you see a new version I just made of the file right to the left of it. So the same file, just added those images. And I'm going to now drop this on Flight Check. Flight Check is our standalone application to pre-flight more than 50 file formats, and it does the work. Look at that. Seconds, it's done. 
standalone, outside of InDesign, like any tennis player will tell you, don't coach me during the match, coach me before and after the match. So here we are now, we get first the results, we get a full overview of potential problems. You see a bunch of them, all based on said preferences in our ground controls, which we set up to check for various problems. You see a full host, we check for resolution between certain ranges. We'll look for ICC profiles. We'll look for LZW encoding. You name it, we'll check for it. Let's go look now at the main window, the main interface, where we get a full overview of all colors and fonts used. Very important. We see here some, and if you hover over any icon, you'll see, and you can try a 30-day demo version yourself via the link we'll provide. You'll see that here we have a screen font is missing for these two files. That might cause very slight, in some cases, or major in other font cases, misalignment or trickery of the fonts, the typography, the way it would look compared to how it will print. So very important to have both the screen and printer fonts. What I want to show you is under the images section. But what we see here is a lot of very important information. What I want to first highlight, I'm going to make the window bigger to do this, is that these here, these images here with the long file name, and it says stored. And we have that checked as a potential problem. Why? You'll notice there's three. You'll notice they have strange names. These are the files we just dragged and dropped from the internet or copied and pasted from PowerPoint into our InDesign print document. All right, Flight Check sees them. I want, I want you to note this now because it's very important what I'm going to show you in a moment. We have a JPEG, a TIFF, and another JPEG that were done like that. But we also have a missing image. That's not okay. So we have actually four main problems. A missing image, which is quite easy to solve uh, if we can find the image. But these stored images are the problem, which I showed you how we just added in InDesign. Now, if we go back into InDesign here, there's a link to a source that is missing. A source that is missing. Note that. Go to the links panel, you know, to check it out. All right, okay. We're back in here. My links panel is here. Very handy in InDesign. And you can see the the missing image here with the question mark. Okay? And I get some useful details. There's just no doubt about it. It's useful. But now take a close look here. What do you see? These are all the links. These are all the images used according to InDesign and their pre-flight, which still shows just one error, that one missing image. Where are these images? One. It highlights it here and says, hey, look at all this fancy information. Where are these files? Well, look, if I click on this one, nothing happens in the links panel. Click on this one, nothing happens. They don't show up in InDesign links panel, but they do show up in Flight Check. You see them right here. Those three images. And you see down below, we still only see one error. There's a default settings, pre-flight panel, images, right? They're images. I did an image search on Google. They don't show up here. These links don't show up as missing. If I go and define profiles under links, if I go to images and objects and I click that on, and I have to switch to basic copy, and we do, we get, we get you here, see you. As I switch, we then see we have more errors. And under links, we also have images and objects. And image resolution, you see that these are defined as graphics, what we drag and dropped in here. Okay. There's no, nothing unique. It will take you to each individual graphic. But there's nothing unique about the name. And, uh, you know, similar to flight check. But it doesn't really tell us anything else that there's nothing absolutely wrong here. Okay? Amazing. So pre-flight is useful in InDesign, but Marchware, who has the patent on pre-flighting and are known as the inventors of the standalone pre-flighting process, goes many steps further, and this is just one instance where we can pinpoint that. Would you as a pre-press operator want to 
risk the chance that your customer who's dragged and dropped files from the internet into their file or has copied and pasted from Word or PowerPoint into their InDesign document and it's coming to print with you that you would overlook this? FlightCheck will find this for you in seconds. I'm telling you right now, and I'll put a couple links in right here after this. Well, here, check it out right now first. Check out what we get in, and this is just from the last year. And I, you know, I get many more phone calls and Skypes and iChats and you know live chats about this. People copying and pasting, dragging and dropping from the internet. Check it out. All right, here's a couple more. I was placing an image and the app collapsed. InDesign document crashed while copying and pasting a photo. Dear David, you identified my possible problem. Placing images via drag and drop from an internet page. I have been copying and pasting data and images from MS Publisher directly into InDesign. Huge problem for corrupting files. An even bigger problem because InDesign doesn't even see it inside your file. Won't even so you see this is a real problem. And you see that FlightCheck solves that problem, warns you of these stored images as we call them, which could be copied and pasted or drag and drop from the internet, but basically that file is not on this hard drive as a designer here. But FlightCheck will, will get you right down to the bottom of it. Point Now this is a good reason to ask for a PDF, and many people do require PDFs. But many printers just cannot make that requirement on their customers because they just can't. I mean, if, they, if they're dragging and dropping things from the Internet to use as a high-res image, how are they going to make a high-res PDF? I mean, there's, there's certain levels of uh, cooperation that's needed as a printer to help your customers. Now, this document, again, another useful feature of FlightCheck is its ability to collect the job. If your designer is going to send you a native file, you could better have them use FlightCheck 2 and collect the job. And what you'll notice, we can compress the job, you know, making it nice and small for sending to the next party in the workflow. But it will also collect not only all the fonts, but also all the images. You get a FlightCheck folder. Flight check approved folder, in this case saying, watch out, it's not approved. So right away we know as the next person in the workflow, hey, this file's got something iffy about it. The collected job folder inside will have all needed elements. It'll make a copy of the file pre-flighted, in this case an Adobe InDesign desktop publishing layout. It'll make a collect report, a full pre-flight report for the next person or party in the workflow. A fonts folder with all available fonts. And an image, images folder with all images used and collected into one folder. The same file we just got in via the FlightCheck collected folder here and drop it on FlightCheck again. We see the, the images there. What you see in our page layout, those exact images with the exact problems. So now if I want to go into the file, and th this is extremely handy. Let's go check it out, launch document. Boom. You're right inside the document. And you're right to the page you need to go to and right to the element you need to address. Folks, this is Marksware's Flight Check version 6.90 for the Macintosh with full CS6 support and lower. It'll check, like I said, more than 50 file formats from Adobe Illustrator, Photoshop, Quark Express, 9 and lower. PDFs themselves will even have a special set of ground controls only for PDF. This is FlightCheck. Get the 30 day demo today. I have so much more to tell you about this product to show you one example. I went into detail on it. I hope you understand why. Don't leave home without it.